Hello, hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my WWE Monday Night War review for the night. Monday, July 7th, 2014. Hope everyone had a great 4th of July holiday, heading out the holiday as War heads towards Battleground, going through Canada. Montreal tonight. Uh, tonight's War, last week's War is probably one of the best Wars in a while. With some great returns, some decent action. Tonight's War. That was okay, yeah. The screwy ass made of it. I knew that made of it was me screwy. As long as I mean, that match was booked, I was like, something's gonna happen during that main event, something screwy, something happened. We had some I think we had like two decent action matches. We had a great tag match which opened up wall. And you had actually one of eight three eight three say this, probably one of Orton's better matches lately. Because he was wrestling against a lunatic. A lunatic fringe! <laughs> Canadian art is red, white, look it up. Oh, God, Grant. This one, Canada. Hey, need to mention it. Anyway, I think it's an okay one. Not as good as last week. We head towards Battleground. We saw some seeds planned for some matches at Battleground that I thought were going to happen. So, let's get started with a promo involving Roman Reigns. Now, this is about to be a fun way to begin war. Now, Reigns hasn't been the best on the microphone. He lets his action speak for him with his Big power moves, and of course the spear, and of course the Superman punch, which would be in effect during this promo. He was talking about how he's getting ready to be the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, some good news about tonight's wall, though. Despite me saying that this wasn't one of the best walls in a while, the Canadian crowd was great, and for the first time in months, we had an authority-free wall tonight. Yay! Finally, we didn't get a we we had a wall without Triple H and Stephanie hugging the spotlight. You know what I mean? Despite that, we only had two really good matches tonight. Which was just okay. Heading towards the paper, we needed to step it up more as so we head towards Battleground. So, like I said, Cena is defending the title in a fatal four-way Battleground involving Woman Reigns, Orton, and Kane. Even Woman Reigns had a cool little sec. People chanting Cena sucks, and even he's like, Yeah, I agree, Cena sucks. And then Orton came out, actually, a man that Reigns called Woman, Reigns called Orton's bitch, Kane came out. And that's when Woman called him a bitch. He's like, You're, more, you're like Triple H's lapdog. I must correct myself. You've actually been Orton's bitch lately. So they ran a ball involving Kane and Reigns all over the ring side area. They just brawled. Duking it out until all the referees and all the officials came out. This is when it got funny. Reigns punched the crap out of Jamie Noble and then speared the hell out of Finn Finley, who are both officials now, before landing a Superman punch on Kane. So, so they I, I like Reigns was okay on the mic tonight. Like he hasn't been the best on the microphone. Like I said, he's better. Letting his action speak louder than his words. But at least he's trying to be more comfortable on the microphone, especially kind of embracing himself. Hey, he's Wack's cousin. So he's gonna have some sort of Wack charismatic mic presence in him. But we'll see how that goes. And a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, he's getting pushed too soon, and people are gonna hate on him. You know, the bandwagon is gonna jump off because because he's getting pushed a lot. I like Wayne. I've seen the seeds planted for his big push since Survivor Series. Let alone the Royal Rumble. So I hope Wayne does get, does get a big push. Especially they try to push Wallens, but we'll see what happens after the main event tonight. Getting, shh, it's getting screwy. Let's get on down to our first matchup tonight. Like I said, we had two really good matches out of this wall. Like the match was like, okay. We had two really good matches. One of them was an opening matchup. The Usos and the Wyatts facing off again. This time, non title. Now, people may say the feud's getting tiring. But that's what happens in this generation. These generations don't like lengthy feuds that last two or three months. They only last a few weeks and it's like, we're sick of this feud already. They don't like, they just don't appreciate the art of building a great rivalry. I even said that last week about rushing Reigns and Triple H. Not having Triple H on this week kind of delayed the push for the Triple H Reigns feud. I know people are saying they want it for SummerSlam, but they're going to rush the feud. If they want it for SummerSlam, they gotta have a match at SummerSlam that's only had a few months to build, let alone you gotta have a decent build with the Evolution Shield feud. 
But still, I'm here to handle the sell. Better pay for it. But like I said, despite people maybe saying the Usos, why a few may be boring to some, if the matches live up to that, like if, if there wasn't, if they weren't still delivering great matches, then I would say the feud was boring. But you know what? They still deliver great matches. The match last week of the pay-per-view was great. And once again, this match tonight proved once again why they're great rivalries. And once again could give Wyatt another tag team title shot. We saw in a six-man tag last week, Hopper delivering a killer clothesline to one of the Usos, giving the Wyatt a six-man tag victory, pinning one of the tag champs. And tonight, once again, the Wyatt's look dominant. And like their Miami Mike match, very chaotic, very chaotic last Five minutes or so, with Neo Falls, great high flying action, and ending once again with a hopper clothesline. Despite some big kicks and big flying Uso moves, here comes another big clothesline from Hopper, and the same result: one, two, three victory for the Wyatts. And Usos were complaining at the end of the match, saying that it was the wrong Uso on the wing. It was the illegal Uso. Well, you can't tell apart. Unless you know who wears what side of face paint each month, each week. Because one, one guy wears his face paint on the left, and the other guy wears his face paint on the right. you got to realize which one's who, depending on which side of the face his face is painted. You know what I mean? So, there you go with that. And a great matchup once again for these guys. Like, I've been... Long, I think the Wyatts have gotten way better in the ring. Specifically, Harper and Warren. Gotten way better in the ring. Especially Harper, man. Harper, for a guy that thought to be agile and give those nasty killer clotheslines. Man. I smell another rematch, like I said, between Wyatt's and Usos. This time, for the titles, smelling at Battleground. Now, this match right here proved why Wall was not a good one. You had two good matches, but the rest was crap. You had a great tag team match to open up Wall. They had stupidness. Like the Nikki Bella Alicia Fox match, where both women were supposed to have arms tied behind their backs. Do I even need to describe this match? It wasn't even a match. It's like a fucking segment. Even if the authorities gone, Stephanie still tries to stack the deck against Nikki Bella after Brie Bella left the company or quit the company. Continue that little storyline. And it was a stupid. The Bella had her arm tied. Nick Alicia didn't even bother to get her arm tied. Just beat the crap out of a one-armed woman. She beat a one-on-one woman in an ass-kicking contest, basically. It was stupid, pointless, and I love the fans chanting. I love the Canadian crowds tonight chanting bullshit, and boy, this match fucking deserved those chants. And this is just pointless and stupid. They didn't need to be on this one tonight. So over our next match of tonight, Rusev against Rob Van Dam. Now, it's probably, despite... The fact is, like, this one was okay tonight. He has decent moments. It's like, as we call being okay. But Rusev, this is probably one of his better matches I've seen. Especially in a guy against Rob Van Dam to work with. You know, RVD's a great performer, great athlete. And he kind of made Rusev look good. That's what RVD and Jericho are both doing in the company. They don't care about money. They don't care about fame and getting another title reign. Unlike some people who try to come back for another shot and pushing somebody else off the top who's worked every fucking week. Booty stuff. Anyway, you know, RVD getting all the people over. And Rusev looked really good tonight against RVD. That's what older talent like Jericho and RVD are there for, to make younger talent look good. And Rusev has looked better than any other match I've seen him in. It's a long match. And despite the fact that, yes, Rusev won again by crushing Rave there with the accolade, still one of Rusev's better matches. And we also, I wish though, that we would have seen Jack Swagger get involved to continue their feud after Swagger interrupted Rusev's speech last week. But I'm hearing they have officially, kind of officially mentioned and announced that Swagger has issued a challenge through Zep Coulter for Rusev at Battleground. And I think that match will happen. I saw the seeds planted last week, but I still wish we saw Swagger get involved somehow in the matchup between Rusev and RVD, whether it's during the match or even after the match. But still, there you go. Great, great matchup. Decent matchup for those guys. But then the second best match of the night, probably in my mind, like I said earlier in the beginning, one of Orton's better matches lately. Like the rules of RVD match, who's had a great guy like RVD to work with. Same with Orton, who worked with Dean Ambrose tonight. 
Now, this actually was a brawl. This was a fucking fight. This wasn't even a match. It was just a fucking brawl between these guys. You know, you saw the Shield Evolution feud. You saw that feud. You know how big of a brawl those, these six guys were. The Evolution and Shield were just brawl. And their fights would just go all over the arena. There's, this was no exception between Ambrose and, and Orton. And I've been saying this for weeks. Seeing this ever since the Shield broke up, that everybody's benefiting from this Shield breaking up. And everybody's looked good since they've broken up. Especially Ambrose. I didn't like Ambrose. I think a lot of people didn't like Ambrose at first. You know, everyone thought that Ambrose might be the star, but he fell off the wagon. And then Rollins and Reigns took the reins, and they became the guys to look out for. But I think Ambrose has kind of become a sleeper. His craziness is attracting people. And he's delivering better promos lately. And his psychoticness really helped match out, especially when he delivered a figure four on Randy Orton. It was just psychotic. That's craziness, you know. He just goes... He got his ass beat by Orton, especially getting a uh, Hangman DDT on the barricade and another Hangman DDT on the middle wall. And he still came back for more. And I love the ending, though. The ending was kind of a fun ending. Ambrose was trying to fight back. He kind of whammed himself against the ropes. Orton did try to RKO at least once. But then, as Ambrose ran up against the ropes again, he sprang from the ropes, running into an, another RKO, which was successful for Orton in a 1 2 3 victory for Randy Orton. Over Ambrose. So, like I said, a fun matchup between these two guys. It was just a brawl. You know, just a brawl between these guys. And Ambrose looked really good tonight against this, in this matchup tonight. Oh, like I said, Ambrose looked really good in this matchup against Orton. Has a great, great off, great offense, but especially the craziness. There's a kind of, there's that kind of added to it. That's why I think the match was so interesting. It was fun. It's a fun matchup. Just a brawl between these two guys as Orton got the victory. Now on to our next matchup, the continuing burying of Dolph Ziggler, losing to Del Rio again. God, I cannot believe it. Del Rio defeated Ziggler with a little help from Fandango. Now last week we saw this that Ziggler got kind of caught in this summer way Fandango Layla love triangle does not become a rectangle because you saw Fandango wrestle Dolph Ziggler last week. And Ziggler kissed Summer Rae. And his touch and helped Dolph Ziggler get the victory. Now tonight, we saw Von Nagel do commentary. And Ziggler looked really good. Especially, he saw some fans bring some push. Ziggler signs. He needs a big push. Like another guy. Sandow. Anyway, I'll get to him in a moment. Or should I say, Sand Hot. Anyway, Ziggler looked really good against Del Rio. But once again, like, like he lost to Del Rio a few weeks ago. To be, and that was uh, for the Money to Bank qualifying matches for the title match. And Del Rio beat Ziggler in that, and once again, Del Rio won. With help, like I said, from Fandango, distracting Dolph Ziggler by Scalamoose, Scalamoose, Montreal, doing the Fandango, distracting Ziggler long enough to get a big insecure kick and a wall up and 1 2 3 victory for Del Rio. And Del Rio, this, this is an incentive. Get a rematch, or seriously, sure a match against uh, Sheamus. The winner of this match will take on Sheamus for the United States Championship tomorrow on the WWE Network, which they're really shoving out our throats tonight by hammering down this free preview. Despite the shoving down our throats, I will say this WWE Network's a great deal. You know, I love it. You know, some people may say, oh, it's 10 bucks a month for the same day of pay per views a month, but hey, you get a great deal. You don't pay 55 bucks a month for the pay per views. Great original porn gaming. And Saturday Night's Main Events are up now. Well, at least for the first three years. 85, 86, 87. I have to put more in, but at least the first three years are up. But I hate the fact that Sa that uh, Ziggler's going to lump in this whole Fandango, Summerway, Layla thing. And it's getting stupider and stupider every week. Especially when we saw Fandango kissing Layla, but eyeing Summerway, who was standing by her door. This is getting more stupider. Super cover, love, rectangle. Now... <laughs> Then we had a promo involving Stardust and Goldust. God, you know, things are getting weird every week. But it was a very entertaining backstage segment involving Stardust and Goldust. With uh, Stardust kind of making love to Goldust's wig. <laughs> it's kind of a weird promo. Making some Back to the Future references. I haven't seen that movie all the way, so I didn't get the references that well. My brother loved that movie series. But I never saw the movie all the way. I've seen like bits and pieces, but not all the way. So it's kind of a fun, interesting segment involving Stardust. They say one of the match against my backs again for the millionth time. 
feuds that are getting boring is that feud. Now, on to our next segment involving Bret Hart. Now, I was like, at this point in the show, I was like, we haven't seen Damien Sandow make a fool of himself yet. It's like, yeah, we may finally see a night without Sandow dressed up like somebody. Boy, was I dead wrong. As Bret Hart came out, Montreal of all places, but, you know, the Montreal school job, here comes Bret the Hitman Sandhart. Now, once again, sound like a broken record again, like every week. If you've been actively and regularly been watching my war reviews lately, you know how it really grinds my gears for me to see a guy like Sandow get buried like this. I did like his music man impersonation last week. At least he's finally embracing it. You know, with St. Tino retired. Best wishes to him. Sad to see him go despite his comedic fashion of a wrestling style. Sandow is kind of filling the wall of St. Tino right now, being a comedic for it. He's actually embracing it. But like I said a few weeks ago, WWE really needs to keep this going. I don't want to say that, but I want to keep this going. I want Sandow to go along with this, because I want Sandow to deliver a pipe bomb one of these days on the WWE for making him look like a fucking fool ever since he tried to cash in on Cena. To cash in my in the bank on Cena. Hope the same doesn't happen to Wallens. I'll get to that soon. Anyway, Sandhart came out. You're making fun of Canada, all that shit. And here comes Sheamus. To take on Damien Sandhart. Now, for being a Sandow squash again, to lose a guy against Sheamus, interesting, but uh, Sandow once again embraced it by wearing a, you know, because Bret Hart's got gray hair now, so he wore a gray wig that fell off after Bret Hart sucker punched him, leading towards a match against Sheamus. I even liked the sharpshooter attempt on Sandow, from Sandow. But indeed, like all the other times, you get squashed, especially with the bro kick and the 1-2-3 victory for Sheamus. It was an okay matchup, but I was like, come on, man. They keep being sent now. He should be higher up. But this could be a good thing for him. Even though I've been bashing this whole thing with Sent now being squashed, I think this could really help him. You know, in the meanwhile, you know, as a pro and a con, con is, it's burying him. In the pro is, it could really help him get back up the ladder. At least this gimmick will get, it's getting a reaction. That's the point. It doesn't matter what kind of reaction that people give somebody, whether it's, in Cena's case, booze or cheers, at least they're reacting to it. At least there's a reaction to send out making a fool out of himself by dressing up like different characters every week. There's a reaction. That could really help him get back up when he finally dumps his fucking gimmick, which I hope he does soon. So like I said, pro and a con at the same time. A blessing and a curse. Now on to our next matchup. The Miz against Jericho. We saw both these guys return last week. And it's just me or is Miz kind of copying the walk here. Now, when Rock got booed heavily and tested frequently, he kept leaving a lot when his movie career really got going. He kind of, he kind of embraced the boost by kind of playing an arrogant, cocky, movie star type character. I think that's what Miz is doing now. Since he's kind of like the modern day Rock by leaving a company in and out to make crappy made the video movies, that'll be... In the five dollar bin at Walmart, faster than you can say Marine Two or Marine Four, the movie that misses in. Uh, at least Jericho's Fozzy CDs will also never be in the five dollar. At least Jericho's CDs are ten bucks. You know, not five or a dollar in a dollar store like Mrs. DVDs are going to be one day in a dollar store one day. Any in a five dollar bin at Walmart. Anyway, uh, Mrs. Jericho had a match tonight. I didn't see exactly how this happened, but Jericho's ear started bleeding a bit. Like, on top of his earlobe, started bleeding a bit. I thought it was an like earring for me, but I realized, oh my god, that's blood. So maybe Miz punched him or something. I didn't really see exactly what happened that made Jericho bleed. But despite that, Jericho and Miz had an okay little matchup. And I was thinking in the back of my mind as Jericho delivered some great moves that Miz, of course, delayed the face buster, of course, trying to go for the code breaker, and of course, going for the walls of Jericho many times. Miz even tried to go for the figure four tonight. I was thinking in the back of my mind. They have to continue what they started last week when Miz and Jericho had their little comeback skit. Bray Wyatt interrupted. And like I said last week, they don't fuck this up. Bray Wyatt and Jericho could be a heck of a few because these two guys are great promo guys. And I predicted it right. Jericho and Bray would confront. But after the match. So Jericho had some decent moves and he got the walls of Jericho. On Miz at one point, again, at, it was the second attempt, and it got the tap out. 
One to tap out victory for Jericho in his first match back, looking good. And then as he was celebrating, here comes Bray Wyatt. Now, I've always loved the fact that when Bray Wyatt comes out, all the cell phones are turned on. This is the brightest I've seen it with everyone's cell phones out. And Bray delivered another killer promo again saying, Jericho, all these guys were once your Jericho-holics. But now the followers are mine. And I love when Bray did this. That you will never, ever. And then I love Jericho's retort by delivering a classic, Would you please shut the hell up? I love that, man. Seriously, this is what this is why I was hope this is what I was thinking this feud was gonna be like. Great feud based on the promo guys. Because the great promo guys, and this is the feud I was hoping they were gonna do. This is what I was intending this feud. This is what I thought this feud was gonna look like. Especially from the hype with the promos. Because these guys are great promo guys. With like I said, Jericho being a more fun, comedic guy. And Bray being a more methodical, thinking man's promo guy. Jericho's like, I'm gonna beat your ass right now because Bray came out alone. But it wasn't alone for long. He brought out Harper and Warren to back him up. And Jericho decided not to get involved because he got that triple beat down last week that led towards his sister Abigail. So, Jericho and Bray, this is what I wanted the feud to be like, and this is the build-up I wanted. Great promo between these guys. Great interaction. Like I said, the Wyatt Jericho feud should be good. I think Battleground should be the place. But I think it should hold off till SummerSlam. Or maybe have a match at Battleground, then have a DQ at Battleground, then have a match again at SummerSlam, though. That's what I think, but sooner or later we'll see Bray and Jericho fight. Wrestle. And the feud's gonna be great. Like I said, the build gonna be great because they're great promo guys. This segment proved it tonight. Now, on to a. Well, another Divas match. Not as silly as the first Divas match, but still, at least finally, we may have seen the breakup of the Funkadactyls tonight. We would see Naomi and Cameron take on a unique pairing, AJ and Paige. Now, I thought they were going to be feuding after Paige lost to AJ last week when AJ made a return. And Ben, Paige, in an impromptu title match, kind of like what Paige did, poetic justice indeed, for what Paige did to AJ the night of the WrestleMania. And we saw Paige introduce AJ. I thought she was going to like make fun of AJ. It's just me always Paige turning heel here. By now, Shaking AJ's hand, and actually having some great teamwork between these two. I thought one of them was going to turn on the other one. They ended up going to the Funkadactyls, with Cameron refusing to tag in. Like, Naomi was like, it turned like a two on one handicap match with the great double teamwork from AJ and Paige, with Cameron refusing to tag in and putting on lip gloss. But then Cameron finally got the blind tag in, only to walk into a Paige turner in the victory for Paige and AJ. Now, we've been seeing the fucking Dactyls break up seeds planted for months. We even saw a almost hit of the breakup last week with a shoving match. But the shoving match this week turned into a cat fight. I think finally, finally, Naomi's got that monkey off her back. That's Cameron. They had a little cat fight tonight. And, that's, and this could possibly go for a battleground match. Because I think Naomi has a good chance of being a Divas champion one day. She's the most athletic one of the fucking Dactyls. Cameron can't wrestle for crap. Naomi's a better wrestler, and Cameron knows it. Now she's been riding, Cameron, she's been riding Naomi's coattails for months. She's been jealous, and not re refusing to tag in, and refusing to support, support me. We've been seeing the siege planted for weeks, and now we've finally seen a combination with the possible breakup tonight, following the loss against AJ and Paige. I think they were going to break up eventually. I think Paige and AJ will finally have their much-awaited feud once Paige gets jealous of AJ, I think. That's what's going to happen. Because all girls get jealous of each other, don't they? That's, that's what all good feuds are basically based off jealousy. That's how they all break up. That's what happened tonight with Naomi and Cameron. An event that could happen at Battleground. Should be the pre-show. Now on to our next match. God, speed up pointless. You thought the Divas match was pointless? You had a match involving the little man, El Torino. But first, we would have Cesaro against Kofi Kingston, a rematch from last week. And it just me, all they burying Cesaro now. For the second week in a row, Kofi wins. Like, I like Kofi Kingston and all. You know, I've been wanting Kofi to get a big push for months and years. Like, he's been a great athlete, great ass at the WWE. But he's stuck in mid-card as long as he has a plain old babyface. He needs to turn heel one day. But if they don't have the balls to turn Cena feud, 
Cena heel, and now have the balls to turn Sheamus heel again, they never turn Kofi heel. He says, oh, it looked really good again, especially with his reverse backbreaker, chest first on Kofi. Like, mm, that was a nasty hit. But again, Kofi got a surprise victory. Ain't like last week, when Kofi won, at least this time it was on TV, not on the app. Says all would beat up Kofi again in a post-match beatdown, only to be thwarted by Biggie Langston to the rescue. Or should I say, just Biggie to the rescue? It says all ran off before doing any further damage to Kofi like he did last week. God, says all's push may be over before it even begins. He lost to Kofi two weeks in a row. You know, but now we have Big E getting involved. We'll see what happens here. It, this feud's got some potential, because Big E's strong, and so is his all. So we'll see how that feud matches up. Another match could be happening for the pay-per-view battleground. But like I said, on to, like I said, this month was, they yeah, two great matches. The match was just filler, especially this one being all stupid. El Torito against, of all people, Bo Dallas. Really? 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 Ball Dallas against El Torito. We all knew this match was going to be shitty and screwy. God, this is pointless. Po as pointless as the Nikki Bella Alicia Fox match tonight. Pointless. And Bull Wing. <laughs> we were Bon Trial. We were put to Bow Sleep. Stupid. Ended up with the winning Bulldog in the victory. At least he has a good people chanting Bull Leaf. In the victory lap at the end. That was probably the only funny part was the ending. Like after the match, Bull won. He's doing the victory lap. It basically inadvertently won to El Torito. That was kind of a funny spot. That's the only thing that was funny or anything good but the stupid match. It was just pointless. Now he's 18 and Bow. The. The Undy. Undy. The boated streak continues. Trying to insert bow and everything like fucking bone does every week. So after that, screwiness onto our screwy main event. Involving John Cena, the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, taking on the man who's Mr. Mind the Bank, Seth Rollins. Now, I said it last week and I'll say it again. I do not want Seth Rollins to cash in the Mind the Bank briefcase on Cena. Because the last guy that tried to cash in on Cena is now resorting to dressing up like Bret the Hitman Hart, Vince McMahon, Abraham Lincoln, among others, before we descend out. So I want Seth Rollins to cash in on anybody else but Cena because I don't want Seth to lose and end up getting buried like Sando is right now. Because Seth has so much potential and I don't want him to fucking get buried by Cena like he did the fucking Sando. So anyway, we would see Seth Rollins look really good, despite this being a typical another Super Cena match and screeners. Seth looked really good, okay, okay against Cena. That's a good offense, but of course, like every other Super Cena match, you would see Cena come back on top with the Pinnacle Shuffle, the FU, even try the STFU, but just he was about to do that. Bam! Big fire! Here comes Kane! But Kane was coming from one direction, but one Came from behind, that one from behind, being Randy Orton, causing the disqualification, and the beat that on Cena began. And it was kind of like last week's when last week's ending. It was like a, it was like last week deja vu. We saw Cena beat down again at after the matchup being a no contest, being laid out by Kane and Randy Orton, and once again we saw Seth Rollins once again teasing to cash in money in the bank on Cena, and also like last week's ending. We would see Dean Ambrose come out and thwart Seth's party again. This is the best part about Seth Rollins trying to cash in on Cena, at least every time. This is a sign, Seth. It's a sign. Don't cash in on Cena. Because every time you do, Seth, you're going to be interrupted by Dean Ambrose. Then Roman Reigns came out as well in this fray. Taking out Kane and Orton after they tried to beat down Cena after Ambrose thwarted Seth's plans again to cash in on Cena. So then Wade would come in and deliver some big moves. Spear would have on a cane. And then we would have another big stare down. Not as big as last week's stare down involving Reigns and Triple H. But we saw Cena making eyes with Woman. And Woman, of all things, kept raising Cena's hand. We would 
and Dwarf, when Roman Reigns raised his Cena's hand, he kept looking at him with a big smirk on his face. He's not raising Cena's hand. In his mind, Cena's raising his hand as the new WWE would have a championship. That's why I think Roman kept on making Cena, raising Cena's hand. He wasn't raising Cena's hand. It was the other way around. He was making Cena raise his hand. That's why I think. Playing off the situation, because at least Roman Reigns, like I said in the beginning of the show, said that Cena sucks. But, you know, I, I think Reigns ain't ready for championship yet. I think he'll be champion one day. But not now, though. He's getting a big push. The fans are loving him. But I don't think it's time yet. Let him get that feud against Triple H. I think that'll be the feud that'll make people really look at him as a big contender. If he can thwart a big guy like Triple H, a legend like Triple H, I think he deserves to be champion. That's what I think. They need one big feud to make Roman Reigns really look good. And that's what I think they're going to do with him and Triple H. Whether it takes place at SummerSlam, or I want it to take, or where I want it to take place, inside and at Hell in a Cell, the pay per view, and the match itself, we'll see what WWE does with it. You know? So there you go. That is my wall review for this evening. Thank you all very much for watching. With that in mind, y'all been attacked by the new review from Zach. Once again, thanks for watching. See you later. Yeah.